Hello, and welcome to From Garden to Plate. I am Alice Erickson, the creator of this channel on YouTube. Throughout the content of this channel, I will be showing you my tricks and tips that are proven to give you amazing yield in the garden, because I have 20 years experience of gardening. And how to utilize an item that you preserved from the bounty of the harvest into everyday delicious meals. I will occasionally do a tutorial in order to how to make a preserved item such as spices, salsas, and sauces. If that interests you, please like and subscribe. In today's episode, I will be going over companion plants. Which ones that I have found that have truly worked for me and I'll tell you how they do so. I will also be making carnitas in the pellet smoker, utilizing the carnita seasoning and my sliced peppers, which consist of Hungarian hot wax and banana. Companion plants are a good way to keep out parasites and you don't have to use as much pesticide and sometimes they actually also help flavor your food the chives right there are a good deterrent repellent and they also will add flavor to your tomatoes the basil I have there I like to do purple is a hornworm deterrent and it will also flavor your tomatoes. The parsley doesn't flavor anything, but it will grow a flower that will attract a very tiny little wasp that will make sure that if a hornworm does come, it could lay its babies on its back, and therefore take care of your problem. The marigolds you want are French. Because they have been proven scientifically to have the highest resistance to nematodes. Nematodes will go after your roots of your tomato. Nobody wants that. You don't want your tomato getting hurt. So you plant them right near it. I have a six-year-old tribe there. <laughs> And has been planted and comes back every year and I am zone 6a. The blossoms will also bloom and help feed the pollinators on your chive and it will have a smell that will release that a lot of hornworms and other bugs do not like. I'm going to plant my basil right in the center and then my parsley on the end. Then every tomato will have its own marigold. I have found that this is a proven tactic when it comes to companion planting. I barely used pesticide last year and I barely got hornworms. So I saved money and everything naturally took care of itself and I did see that wasp, so from the parsley. By the way, Italian flat leaf is the best one. Making the marinade for the pork carnitas. I have my seasoning that I made in episode 12 if you want to know which one to go over to know how to make it. And I also have two lemons, rough chopped, four Peruvian limes quartered. I took the opportunity to take my 3.88 pork shoulder, they call it half butt, <laughs> I took my knife and I scored it both ways, all around. Did a dry rub of the seasoning that I made 
and I put the rest of it in there. By the way, I use two tablespoons in all. Most of it is inside of the bag and a light coating is on the shoulder. So I have two cups of orange juice, organic, uh, full pulp, uh, non-concentrate. So you pour that in right into your marinating bag. Take your lemons, slide them right in. The lines. And that right there, close up your bag, is going to be your marinade. I let it go for 24 hours. I have already prepped the shoulder to go into the smoker by taking it out of the marinade bag and patting it dry with paper towel. Then I did another rub of the homemade Family of the Harvest Carnita seasoning. Probed it because I wanted to reach 200 degrees. Smoked it for four hours and I will be making the braising liquid for it to go into to go for another four hours or until I reach a temperature internally of 200. I'm gonna show you how to make the braising liquid in just a moment. To make life easy, I am using a pitcher because I can easily go into the smoker, lift the meat off the, the rack, pour into the dripping tray that I have to collect all those yummy juices from the shoulder, and I can put all my liquid into it using the pitcher and then put the meat right in it. Way easier that way. Highly suggest it. So I have a half of a red onion, very roughly chopped. So I'm going to put that in first. I am utilizing from the bounty of the harvest my Hungarian hot wax, sliced peppers, and banana peppers. I drained at one quart worth. I'm using 132 ounce less sodium chicken broth. To make sure that my seasoning comes through into the braising liquid, I'm going to do two tablespoons worth. Okay. I am not going to murder the pronunciation of these uh, peppers, but they're excellent for carnitas. I will put it in the recipe for the blazing braising liquid in just a moment. So I'm going to take a rather long two whole ones, just break them apart so that way it goes into the pan easier. Don't need the stem, I want those seeds. And that right there is an amazing carnitas braising liquid. Reason you want to do braising liquid because while it cooks, it's going to go in there and infuse it and make sure you got super good moisture inside of the meat. Because that's the whole point, right? Got to have that flavor. Oh yeah, just finally got the pork shoulder, <laughs> the butt. <laughs> out of the smoker, I reached my ideal temperature internally, which is 200 degrees. I pre-warmed my crock pot here. So I'm going to shred inside of it and I have it on the warm setting. Don't feel like burning my hand, so I grab some gloves here. It's all that steam. In for a treat. Oh, that's pretty. I 
I am going to separate the shoulder and put it in here. I am going to take all that broth and filter it through with the screen here so I can have the broth only and then the peppers in here. Save your broths because you can use it to make dried beans and the flavor incorporated in there. Amazing, which is a future video by the way. Okay, let me get this guy out. Got me clocks. Oh, I need to get that out. There we go. Slid out like nothing. We're in a treat for getting something really good. Okay. There you go. How beautiful is that? You just sit right here and I'll get right back with you. 10 minute rest, then shred it. <laughs> Best I can. Doing this myself, I'm going to drain to get the broth. Peppers. Gotta pull that right out. Oh, did I make a mess? <laughs> That's okay. It's not messy, it's not good, right? <laughs> there we go. I'll throw that in my microwave to keep them warm too. I'm gonna shred it and I'll show you what it looks like. Time to get the claws out. Show you a close up how pretty it is before I destroy it. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. That's coming apart like nothing. All shredded and now I'm gonna add just a touch of my broth that way it stays warm in the crock pot I'm not quite ready to eat yet plus if you wanted to serve this to a lot of people and have it in a crock pot it's a good idea too just a little bit go right in mix it up that way it goes into the meat too evenly distributed A little bit more and I am good. Oh my god. Assembling the tacos. I had the tortillas which are cassava flour ready. I did them on the stove, got them nice and crisp. Gonna put in a layer of Mexican shredded cheese. It's four different types, so that makes it extra special. On the bottom there, I'm gonna use my tongs and grab me the carnitas. Oh yeah, doesn't that look amazing? Already. Then I'm going to put the peppers and onions that were cooked with the carnitas. I'm gonna put some radishes to add some freshness and some nice crunch. Fresh cilantro, of course. A 
do a little bit of the chili lime crema sauce. Top it off with one of those Persian limes. Nice extra citrus notes. Time to do a taste test. Oh, yes. Oh, forgot to put a little extra cheese on top. What am I doing here? Here we go. Mm. The carnita slash pork, Spanish from pork, is very good. Lots of flavors inside. The lime extra on there is a nice accent. The radishes are nice and fresh. I hope you do this for yourself because it's quite delicious and yummy. And thank you very much for viewing today. Take care.